It's assuming there's audio. I'm just guessing you can hear me because I don't have a clue if it's working. So I'm going to show you how to make an expanded Rambi Icosi Dodecahedron in Blender. We are using the most recent version of Blender as of January 8th, 2022. I have already made a D30 or an also called a trunk. What the heck do they call it? <clears throat> Triconctahedron. No idea why they call it that, but it's a 30 sided object made with golden rhombuses. You know they're golden rhombuses because if you divided that number by that number, you would get the golden ratio. Well, one minus the golden ratio or the golden ratio, depending on which way you divided it. Every edge length on this object is, well, it's hard. it wants to show it down to like, you know, the six digits. So it's basically one. The length is one. We can just say it's one. Pretend all the, the nines after the dot, make it a one. I'm gonna get rid of these little things. So with the edge length being one, we're gonna go over here and go into edit mode. And we're selecting faces. And we're going to select a face. And we're going to click the E button to extrude. We are going to type it in now. We're going to type 1.618034, which is approximately the golden ratio. <clears throat> and make it cheat a little bit to make this go quicker. We're going to simply copy the face by hitting Shift D. And we're going to click R for rotate. Rotate it by 72. Oh, not that one. We got to change it so that the rotations are done around the 3D cursor. Now we click R72 and we click Shift D R72. Shift D R72. Shift D R72. Now the distance between each of these points is pretty much one. Really darn close. I gotta grab that one and drag that one and put it there. And that would make the pentagon shape. So if we click the corners, grab that corner, and we grab that corner, and that one click the F button to fill, we now have an expand, we have a pentagon there, and we're going to fill that in, and now we got a square there, and we could, we're going to do some tricks to make this a little faster when we uh, merge all the vertices later so we shift d and click r and type 72 and shift d to copy and r and click 72. now that would be one of the 12 faces i find it very neat that a tricontahedron with edge lengths of one expanded out by the golden ratio gives you exactly one for the edge lengths of everything on the the larger expanded rhombiacosider decahedron. So we're going to try, we might have to make another copy of one of these. So we're going to click this one. We're going to click extrude 1.618034. And 
this one we're going to extrude 1.618034 and we're going to extrude this one with E 1.618034 and this one we're going to extrude 1.618034 we can do this a little differently. We're going to click two of the edges and we're going to click the F button. And now we got a square and we click two edges and we click the F button and we got a square. And we're going to repeat for the edges on all of these golden rhombuses. And then we're going to grab this edge and this edge and this edge and this edge and this edge. And we're going to click F and now we got a pentagon there. So we could take our sweet time and we could click every one of these and we could extrude every one of these and then we could click every set of edges or vertices and we click the F button to fill all of them and it's going to take a while. But we're going to do this a little different this time to make it go a little quicker we're going to get rid of all this crap because i don't want to see these edges i'm going to delete them delete the edges Gotta turn transparency off we can get rid of this tricontahedron if we wish to but let's go to transparency so we can easily select the vertices behind it and we can turn transparency off and we're going to tell this to separate by selection and now it's a separate object and we can hide it because we don't want to see it we don't want it so we're going to go back to vertices and we click that one, we're going to click that one, we're going to click that one. Oh, if you've noticed, when we click that one, it's not quite there. But we can click F and we can fill it anyway. We'll merge these two because there's actually two different vertices here. There's two different ones. And you can see because it highlights them to tell you which one it's picking. It's got the one behind it, it's got the one in front of it, but they're both occupying the same position in 3D space. It just depends on the angle if it shows up correctly. But we'll merge them all later. So we're going to click this triangle. We're going to go up to the Z axis. You can click on these axis buttons anytime you want and it will rotate it. R in 72 and shift TR in 72 and shift TR in 72 and shift TR in 72. Now we have the five triangles. The object. There's still only 20 triangles in this, as it's simply a larger version of the Rhombi icosahedral decahedron. Except instead of 30 squares, you have 60 squares, and you have 30 golden rhombuses, and you'll have 20 triangles, and you'll have 12 pentagons. So to make the rotation part of this happen faster, we're going to be clicking that square, and that square, and we'll click one of these, and we'll click the pentagon, and that square, and that one, 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 why not? And we're going to shift D and click R and 72. And none of those golden rhombuses overlaps, but that's fine. We can deselect it. Well, nope, it doesn't want to deselect, so we're going to click. We'll just merge it later. And click shift D and R and 72, and shift D, R and 72, and shift D, R and 72. And now. We've got the top half of the expanded rhombi icosahedral decahedron, and we're going to click and merge those. And we're going to click these vertices, and we're going to make a square right there. And then we're going to click this triangle and that square. I'll look at it from the bottom side now. And we'll go Shift D and R and 72, and Shift D R and 72, and Shift D R 72, and Shift D R 72. Now we have the top half of this object, 
this beautiful thing called the expanded rhombia cosider decahedron and it kind of looks like a dome and I've noticed I'm a little off center so I'm going to click shift and C to recenter the camera. Now to make this simpler we're going to do some vertice merging right now so we're going to click on the vertices up here in the top left and we're going to go to the select button and we're going to click all or you could click A. Now you selected them all and now we're going to click the M button to merge and if we click by center it wouldn't look right we just have gotten rid of our whole object so we're going to hit control Z and we're going to go back to merge and we're going to click by distance and this will make any vertices that are in the exact same position in space based on how far away they are from each other will merge and they're pretty much the same but I'll just go up to the I'll go up to the hundredth place and I'll click enter so now when I click on these, it'll light up the lines next to it and it will show that uh, I've still successfully merged them. I'll click this transparency button here and you can kind of see where there's some issues, but we'll take care of that when we recalculate the mesh later on. So this bottom layer of squares and golden rhombuses we do not need to copy right now. We are going to copy the top half and we're going to be rotating it 180 degrees on the Y axis. So let us select everything here. And we didn't get those triangles, so let's pick the triangles also because we want the triangles. We've only got 10 of them on here and there's a total of 20, which makes up the bottom part. So we can click the Y, and I think it should work. So we can hit Shift D and R 180. And now we have the complete objects. But you can see there's a line that's a little thicker right here because these are not connected. They're not shared vertices. So we're going to go back to our vertices, and we're going to go to Select and we're going to click all or the A button and we're going to click the M button to merge and click by distance and enter and now that crease mark is gone because now all the vertices are sharing uh, the same edges where they touch so if we click the transparency button we get this weird looking thing because the mesh is all messed up currently I just want to test something out so we're going to click this face and we're going to click the delete button and we're going to click face. It looks like the golden rhombus is successfully merged when you merge the vertices that they share and now it's only one face and there's not two face. So we're going to click control Z to undo that. But we're going to hit select on the face. We're selecting faces at the moment so we can click any face we want but we can hit A and we've selected all of them. We don't have to click the select menu, you can just click A. But now we're going to go up to the mesh option, which I haven't totally figured out, but I know that when you go down to normals and you click recalculate outside, when you click the transparency the next time, it doesn't do that weird thing because the faces are now all facing the outside. If you go onto the inside and you're looking out, you can see through them. If you recalculated, so we're going to click A and select all of them, and we're going to go mesh, and we're going to go to normals and recalculate inside. Now they all look gray, but if we scroll out, you can see through them on the outside because the faces only apparently seem to be one sided. But we want them to be on the outside. So we're going to click A to select them all and mesh. And we're going to click normals and recalculate outside. And we'll turn transparency off. And now we have successfully made the rhombi icosi to decahedron. And all edge lengths are equal to virtually one. That one's actually one. The other ones want to go down to five or six digits. Making the truncate the tricontahedron is the, the challenge and getting them all to be the correct lengths is uh, I haven't figured out the magic to that one yet. 
but it's close enough. So there you are. That is the expanded Rhombi Icosi Dodecahedron. And if you want to make a 3D file out of it, I'll go down to File, and you can go to Export. Though we gotta click, we gotta click it. We gotta get out of X Edit Mode and go to Objects. And we're clicking our object. We don't want to do the other ones. And we click File, and we click Export, and you can make it an OB file. You can make it an STL file, which I've been using when I've been 3D printing items through Shapeways. So we'll just make a but ob files open nicely on windows and you can use 3d paint on them so I'll make it an object file and we're going to click select only selection only so only the object that we're selecting and not the other things if you don't click that all of these will add to the item scale will be zero you could adjust the scale if you were to upload it into shapeways and try to print it anything that measures one meter will only come out as one millimeter so this would be a very small object it would only be about six millimeters in height <clears throat> and we will name it pi dash planet uh, but just call it expanded rhombi icosidodecahedron for now why not fancy names get rid of that parenthesis and we will click the export object button and if we want to see our object we can go to where we saved it in the computer and there's the object file and we're gonna open it and there is your object there is your expanded rhombi icosi to decahedron you can play with the little colors and things that Microsoft's little programs let you do. I think it looks like a planet. And if I wanted to color it like a planet, do you know how I do that? Well, we'll go back to Blender. And I've already got one. But I made it bigger. Much bigger. This one took a while longer because I had to subdivide all the faces before rotating them into position and then merge all their vertices. And I've had to make some other variations and changes since. And I've used the materials option down here in materials. So if we get rid of that one, we went with this one. I pull this one and we go to edit mode. Here I've triangulated all the faces already which is uh you click on a face and you click control t and if you don't so if you don't want it to be triangles you can hit alt j and it joins two conjoining triangles but if you want it to have triangles you hold control t and now you have triangles divided out of the object so if i wanted to select some faces and go to this little round object here called the materials section material properties and we want to add I'm going to add another material we're going to click blue and then we click the assign we've got the color down here we're using nodes I don't know what that means but that's what they call it and you pick your color you want to use and we've already got blue so we click assign and now it's blue. Now we got an ocean. How about we select these and we're gonna make these ones. We're gonna add another color to it. We're gonna make it green because I've already got green pre-selected. You can change it if you want by clicking on this and picking whatever color you want. RGB or HSV or hexadecimal. And you click assign and now we have grasslands and forest on our little planet and let's make a polar ice cap make a bigger one maybe a little uniquely shaped polar ice cap uh, let's get rid of that one be a little off kilter add another material we're gonna click this one we're gonna click assign well, now we got 
it's a little wider colored it's a little harder to see if we go to the render option that looks a little different I haven't figured out the magic with some of these colors but we click the rest of the planet and oh like all that yellow for now so the rest of it turned yellow because the first item on the list is the color the whole object is to change the rest of the colors you have to add extra colors and select individual faces and then apply. So I don't like yellow. It looks so barren, kind of. You could see it as a desert or you could see it as grasslands. I like to make a lot of grass. And make all this wonderful stuff water. Because I like my planets all watery and blue looking. I think water looks better on planets. And now we got blue. And we got a little peninsula going on here. Make that green. I like that green. Let's make it a little bit more of a bay right there. So there's kind of a bay. Got a little more of a rigid looking peninsula. We can pretend there's some empire that exists on it and they control the seas by be having their little kingdom located on this peninsula. It's kind of a deformed version of Michigan, you could see. There's, a, there's the mitten and there's a really big thumb. And that's a really big lake. And we can make them touch. Why not make them touch? And then there'll be a magical little bridge right here. I'm going to just pretend there's a little bridge where that point is. We got the trolls and the upers. Mm -hmm. And Chicago is a wasteland over here. Nice barren, yellow, desolate wasteland. A little polar cap right there. Oh, why not make the top? Oh, we'll turn the top to a polar ice cap also. It'll look better, I think. Gotta get artsy with your design. There, now we got a planet. About what Michigan looks like usually. Just under the ice caps. Well, they're not too far away. Up in there is a little planet. I will click the save button. And I'll call that good. Thank you for watching.